Right, so um, without further ado, let's make a start on the new TACOM AH-64 Apache attack helicopter. So parts one and two is working with the cockpit tub. Um, parts one, we need frame M, which is the tub and associated ancillary parts. So let's grab some sprue cutters, get some parts off the tree and see how they fit together. So the main cockpit, cockpit tub. Blue flash there, nothing deadly. So I trust the old Citadel sprue cutters, I've used them for years. I have a round Draper Expert metal file, which is quite nice for cleanly take off the Nothing deadly. I find the Citadel cutters do a good job at cleaning the parts off as they go. Don't leave a huge burr. tub it's a good size tub let me uh, get some more parts removed and then we'll come back about assembly because I'm sure you don't want to watch me cut parts and cleaning them so a couple of minutes we'll be back okay so I've got all the parts for part one um, taken off the sprue and I'm just cleaning up the last of the seats now if I'm not using a file, I like to use a Swan Morton number 10A on a number 3 handle. A lovely little scalpel, really sharp blades, so you get lovely clean cuts. But they're also, because they're um, hardened steel, they're also really good for scrape cleaning, which I like to do because there's a little bit of burn on the kit that I possibly didn't see in the review. Nothing to write home about though. And a little gentle scrape with a knife cleans the parts. So we've got the seat, um, we've got the seat squab that goes in the seat. There's a few ejector pin marks on the back, but they're not going to be seen, obviously. Um, the connection points, as I noted in the video, are really, really fine. And you can see just a few swipes with the blade, I'm not putting any pressure on it at all, just letting the sharpness of the blade do the work and that has taken off very very fine um, burr lines just where the molds have come together and you see on the back there you just need to go over where the eject pin marks are Splendid. There's beautiful seat detail on there. I think I showed that on the review. Really, really nice seat detail. Uh, so we've got the seat back. We've got the anti-shock brace. Gently clean that. And again, the burring is so minimal that you really just need a very gentle 
drag over the bare line and it's gone. There's really nothing to speak of on the inside of the frame. So that's the anti shock frame. We've got, I think, a bolster cushion here. Again, nip away the nub where you cut it off the sprue. Now, obviously, if you're going to do this, to warn you don't cut towards yourself unless you're really experienced then you know what you're doing I've been doing this for years so I'm happy enough to learn from my mistakes but the beauty of using a very sharp blade is you have to put no pressure on it and therefore you're not likely to slip and cut your finger but be careful right so that's all the parts cleaned let me find a thing of glue now I like using either Tammy or Extra Thin or Mr. Hobby Cement S. I'm going to use Mr. Hobby Cement S for this build. So, what have we got? The tub. And we've got parts M9. So, parts M9 goes. There's a couple of ejector pin marks there, but they're not going to be seen when you put it up against there. So part M9 goes in there. And then we'll just take the glue and touch, 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 and then a gentle press. That's all you need. And that's bonded. And if you really want to be doubly sure, you can just touch it either side there and there. That I fear is the remnants of where it was molded. Oh, I can drop it. Oh, happy days. So we'll just take a knife and clean that away. Tip of the blade like that. Now I also use a sanding sponge if we need just to burnish up the, mat, the plastic. And you can set that in there. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to see that when we get a seat in, so I don't think we need to worry too much about tidying that up. Um, there are those that would want to, and you're more than welcome to. I, on the other hand, am building this straight out of the box without too much fuss, so I am not going to bother. Right, so the next part is M20. I'm just trying to figure out where that goes. Right, M20 I think goes in here. Let me grab a pair of tweezers. And I think M20 goes in there, does it? This is where the instructions are a little bit random. So I can't see where M20 goes. Oh, I know where it goes. I think, I think it goes up on the underside of here. So, yeah, not so clear on the instructions, but I think that is where part M20 goes. So, under, underneath. And I think it just fits in. Not a pixel. Ah, like so. Yes, there we go. So we see that part M20 goes on the underside and then just fits in there. It's a nice fit. So, touch and flow with the glue. And again, a gentle push. If you want, we can run a little bit of glue down this side here. There we go. So, that's part M20 in there. Good. Right, now we need to put some control sticks in. Now, again, these 
if we look at these they've got a small bit of burn I, don't, I can't see if that's focused in or not so and this is the beauty of using this one Morton number 10 a or number 11 would do such a fine point and get in there this is quite hard for anything else to get in there without damaging the detail I just gently scrape the burr line so when we come in to do a detail painting and dry brushing it doesn't stand out uh, what you can't see because I'm not got my head under the camera I've actually got some magnifiers on which means I can actually see what I'm doing because I'm getting old and a little bit short sighted so right so these go with all the switches up and they just fit in the recess there it's a nice positive fit so put two of those to go in I'll drop a glue there I'll drop a glue there a decent set of tweezers is because of huge hands huge fingers and small bits usually give me a lot of trouble so set those to similar angles it's quite a firm reasonably positive fit there's a little bit of play with the glue but reasonably positive you want to set them up reasonably obviously the same angle but high enough that you can see it when you're looking at the cockpit right after that we're going to go for these small parts here which are absolutely tiny I don't even know if you can see that um, they're obviously part of the controls and they fit into there now what we need to make sure is the connection point sprue connection point is cleaned up properly otherwise you're not going to get them to fit in this is where a good sharp pair of sprue cuts come in handy. There we go, nice positive cut. Now, hopefully, what we can do with these. Is get them. We can stick them in. That's a good positive fit. No, it's not actually. Never mind. mind. Right, I was hoping I'd be able to stick them in and they would stay to, I mean just glue them in situ but obviously we're going to need to put a little bit of glue in first. There we go, that's the first one. There's the second one. So once we've got them in, drop a glue again, just to make sure they're fully glued in. Make sure they're fully pressed home. <sighs> Give it a blow off. <sighs> That'll evaporate any glue so you don't end up with glue marks. Right, rudder pedals. Already cleaned them up. Beautiful detail on those. And you'll probably see absolutely none of it when it's glued together. Now these have got a good positive fit in the floor so we can fit these and then glue them. Draw the glue on each one. And then give them a press foam and make sure they're out equal angle that one's in there we go. 
same for the front cockpit. tweezers I struggle sometimes they're a bit better Ooh. don't want to lose this to the floor there we go glue again and then just give them a firm press to make sure they're firm and set home. Again, have a look from different angles so you can see that they're level as they would be in a neutral position and they're not twisted or out of shape, they're all set straight. Oh, that's the accuracy. Right, so there's the first parts in, now we're on to a seat. So begin with putting the brace on the back you've got some really nice large locating holes corresponding slots and I think looking at this it'll only go one way yep because you've got larger holes on one side and smaller on the other which is brilliant because that means idiots like me don't make mistakes really good positive fit on the back and again just touch the four points give it a press it's done now what goes first? So they're saying put in a part A26 first, which is the seat squab. Let's give it a test fit. It's a nice positive fit. Make sure there's no any bits of flash we've missed, which I have. Polish and sponge just to make sure there's nothing getting in the way. So how are we going to do this? Pop that in there so we can just paint. Dollop of glue on the back here so you need something to get a positive bond. Slot that in. There we go. We can just run a bit of glue under each side there. Get a firm press. And that's it home. So the bolster cushion for the lower back support goes in the bottom. Uh, it looks like it will go anywhere you like it. Yeah. What we'll do though, just to be sure, we'll try it both ways. See which one fits best. It's always good to do a bit of test fitting. They both fit much the same. A bit of glue in the center. Give it a press. And then finally we've got the head cushion and that goes one way onto that top piece there. No, I'm hoping there is going to be <laughs> caught that in the hoodie. I'll just pop that with my fingers so I'll get that in place. There we go. Let the capillary action go. <laughs> Right, there's one seat. Quickly do the other one then, now that we know we're all right. Again, we'll just give that a quick rub off on the back. Make sure there's nothing that's gonna make it sit off the seat. Generous. Touch of glue. It's all right, it's all gonna get hidden and get close together. Put that in. It's going together really nicely. So good clean parts, good solid fit, positive location points. Parts are all easily cleaned up and they seem to be working really nicely with the Mr. Cement S, which is good. And again, right, got that part in. So we fix that box, it's not the same. top 
cushion to put on. There's the seats done. There we go. Splendid. All right, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, give me a minute. I'll get the instrument parts out and then we'll carry on with the construction. Okay, so we're back now. I've um, test fitted the seats just so we can see they fit. They're nice. And as I thought, you're not actually going to see much of this panel here. So you can clear it if you want. But if, like me, you're not fussed because you're going to not see it, then I'm going to leave it and save time. Right, so we've got the two um, collective, I think, the controls, possibly. Might be cyclic. I can never remember. Now, these took a little bit of cleaning up, to be quite honest, but they do fit nicely. So, drop a glue, and in it goes. So, they were a little bit burry. I'm not going to say flashy. There is some flash on the, the M sprue, but they were more burred up just where the molds had come together. So, they took a little bit of cleaning, scrape cleaning. Um, and a little bit of polishing with the sponge but all in all they've come together quite nicely and they go in really nicely so there's one control we'll get the second control in um, da, 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 make sure I put them in the right place in the middle does it? I hope so One goes in like that, uh, and it helps if you put it in the right way, of course. That obviously joins in like that. Hmm. Again, instructions is really vague as to where this goes. Right, so I am glued in the right place, so a bit more glue because it evaporates off quite quick. And this piece here goes right in the centre, there, like that. So I just hold it while it lights up. And then we can use the tweezers to just make sure it's square and equal to the other one okay so this joint's a little bit vague however we're getting there again quick eyeball straight down make sure they're level and equal now as it stands they're not going to be any problem painted you've got good access to them um, so you're going to be detail painting. Now what we've got to put on is we've got the rear bulkhead which you can see it's got some pretty hefty ejector pins. They just break off however they do leave quite raised ejector pin marks and for those I have quite a coarse sand and stick, hard sand and stick but because it's coarse only takes a couple of swipes and we've got it level same for the top ones we know we're not going to see this so we're okay however being professional models that we are we're not professional but conscientious models we switch to the fine side and we give it a, a rub up to try and get rid of the, the deepest score marks and I'm not putting any pressure here. And then I get the sponge in. That takes away the bulk of the sanding marks. We'll take them all. As I said, we're not going to see it. But we now know that they're nice and flush. They're not going to impede anything when it comes to putting it in the fuselage. Now, this fits in a nice big location mark on the rear of the tub. 
looks like it's designed to fit in the back so there's a good tight positive fit there we go so if we look on this side so it snugs in and it'll only go in one position and we can get the glue out and glue it from the back and run it in all the joints around with the brush Capillary action will take it around but if you use the brush that will help ensure that the whole joint gets glued and then a gentle push and the bulkhead will bite the glue will bond and we're going to be sorted nice strong joint now what we can do just to check everything's okay let's take the seat and pop it in for a test fit there we go happy with that looks really really good and that's not even with any paint on it it looks amazing now I'm going to leave the seats out whilst I paint it because I want to get all the detailed painting done I've noticed I haven't taken that mark off the nub off the top but we can just take a knife and give it a quick one two and a quick rub with the file Away. Right, side panels, no ejector pins on them, very easy to clean up, we'll just use the hub breadth of the file there, the top will use the metal file and then rub with the sponge, so now this is M4 this part goes here I think looking at the way they go they'll only go one way so if they're not fitting you've got it in the wrong place again big locating lugs looking at it, it's a bit vague though so I need to wonder if I need to do a bit of cleanup maybe because it doesn't look like a very snug fit Take the file in here. It's a bit better fit. There's still something impeding that fit. I don't know what it is. Burn on the back here. Let's Oops. I'm a very clumsy person, so I have a habit of knocking stuff about. Okay, there we go. Look at that. So, a small bit of burn is stopping the positive fit. So, when we're happy, we can commit to glue. the cement s is the tack and plastic really reacts well to it so it's obviously hot enough to melt it very quickly and there we go we have a lovely part in there so what have we got here m3 let's do the front cockpit first so same again quick clean up very very light rub on the top polishing up the sponge because that's obviously the bit you're going to see do a test fit just 
see that we're happy with that. That's fitting nicely. So, clean with the glue. Nudge down, glue bites, good positive fit. Yeah, I'm liking that. So, part M17, eject the pin mark on the back here. We'll need to clean that away. And we need to clean the top. So, using the fine side of a coat of a hard sander. How many swipes is that? Four swipes and it's gone. Sponge to polish up the top edge. Right, this part fits in here. Again, nice positive fit. They can only go in the places they're designed to go. They can't go anywhere else. Gentle nudge once the glue's had a chance to activate the plastic. That's going to strengthen up this back joint here as well. Just going to clean in there because there's a little bit of flash there. Not much. A little bit of burring, but we'll get that out of the joint and make it easier for ourselves. So the last piece is this one here. detail on that side panel lovely bits of cabling get that in there right. fit is a little finicky, finicky I honestly think that's down a little bit of burring but see with the with the mr. cement s it's quite a hot glue if you don't get all the burning cleaned up, it doesn't seem to be a problem because the glue is dissolving it. And when you're putting a bit of pressure on, everything's locking together. So there we go. That is the cockpit together. Now what else have we got? So we've got a couple of multifunction displays to go in. So cut them off and I'll get them in. They're going to be simple enough, and then we're moving on to the combing. So give me a moment, I'll get all the parts cut out, and we'll come back and put it together. All right, so we're back with the parts for moving in the frame a bit, a part for the centre consoles. So this is part two, and we've got part M32 and M13, and they have, again, some pretty fierce ejector pin mouldings that need just to be cleaned out otherwise you won't get these parts together so just dive in there with the side cutters get the points in get nipped out once they've done that they should be too bad to go together which they're not which is fine now we want to try and make sure we get the join half decent so we don't have to do too much clean up. So we start with this end, get the glue in the joint, gentle press, and away it goes. Run it up in the control column. Now in reality the chances are some of this is going to be hidden under the instrument combing, but I try to do a good job. Let's make it that the cleanup's not too bad and we end up with a nice looking part. So glue on, gentle squeeze, and only a small amount of cleanup required. Now to quickly clean this one up. 
metal file. And the beauty of using a metal file is it's obviously hard and flat. So you'll end up getting a nice square surface. You're not going to go off slanty ways. You don't need to use much pressure. You just need to let the teeth work. And they're very sharp and very clean cut. So need to make sure that we orientate this part which is part M23 correctly there's a number of different switches on here and we need to make sure we get them right okay so it goes probably only one way looking at it actually yeah it does so it's a nice clean positive fit. A drop of glue. Push. Done. Now this part here is eventually going to go in here. It's a bit of a loose fit, but I'm sure it'll be fine when we come to put it in. But because we're going to paint this module up, we'll be building this up and then painting it up separately before we put it in. Now there's some small parts that need to go on here and we need to pay attention as to where they go. So we've got some grips for the weapon station. I need my tweezers because they are tiny. Again make sure you get these on the right way so you've got part M32 Thankfully, they've got a good locating holes. Lovely detail on them. So you, most of this will probably be painted black. And you can do a, a nice light dry brush over that to pick out the details. And then once you've got the details highlighted, you can go in with your colors if you need reds or yellows or whatever you need to detail paint the toggle switches on the controls. Have a look around, see that it's all together properly. Drop a glue in there again maybe. Get that closed up if you want to. There we go. Now there is a bit of burn on some of these small parts and there's obviously the the nub where you cut off the frame and I always find it's easier with the small parts is to get them securely glued on let it cure up properly so they're held properly and then go in and clean it up which is what we're going to do so we've got one more part for this if I can find it there it is that just pops in there probably a part you're not going to see at all so a little bit of glue gentle push in there we go and it just clips in place so there's a little bit of glue squeezing out but when we come in to clean that up we just leave that set in cure now when we come in to clean it up then it will all go away so that's the center console part for the weapon station done there is a small piece of photo etch to go on the top here I'll do that once I've cleaned up all the other stuff so we've got the instrument comb in here and I've cleaned a little bit of this up first so still a bit of clean up to do just a few swipes of the broader sand and stick fine side a little bit of burn a little bit flashy but nothing that's gonna change my opinion of this kit at the moment so m19 goes on this side goes on this side so make sure you orientate the part to the right position and they will only go in one way they've got good positive locating lugs and we just take the glue there we go and same on this side 
really good positive locating points. Drop a blue. There we go. Now we've got some little part of the side console here. What we need to go on. We need to get a clear part, but we're gonna have to mask that first. So we've got a couple of small parts to go on. We've got M31, which locates here. Get the tweezers. A little drop of blue there and a locating point. And that just fits in nicely like that. The detail is lovely on these detail parts, they're really nice. And then we've uh, M27 goes in here, a little drop of glue, and we'll get M27. Now again, these two parts are going to need the sprue connection points cleaned up a little bit, but I'm going to do that once they are cured up nicely and held firmly in place. So much easier to do than trying to hold on to them and clean them and risk firing them across the floor. All right, make sure that's nice and square to all the other parts. All right, let's go and find part Q, uh, Q20. We need to have a look on the masks, if there is a mask set. Let's see if there's a mask for it. If not, we're gonna need to mask it up. These clear parts are stunning. So with a clear part, I want to try and cut as far away from the part as I can. And then we'll go in. So we've cut a good piece away from it. Now we can get access real close to the part. Gently does it. We do not want to shatter this part. We don't want to get it scratched either. There we go. And then the same with this. And we'll Again, move away from the part, which leaves us a nub. There's not so much pressure on it now, it's not on the frame. You can always come back in and gently, gently, ever so gently let the cutters do the work. We'll take it down because you don't want to risk fracturing it and sending a crack down through the glass. Holding it tightly between your fingers, and then we'll use the metal file, this nice sharp teeth, to remove the nub. Gently with a fine side like that to finish it off. And then we'll give it a little polish. There, now this is all going to be painted so it'll be alright. Still a little mark there, just on the edge. A small scrape and it's gone. Right. You see that beautiful clear part, crystal clear, no warping, absolutely stunning. We've got raised detail and rivets on there too, so it's really, really nice. So we can test fit it to start with. It will only go the one way. How does it fit? Actually really nice, beautiful fit. I've already got it dusty from cleaning it, but we know it fits fine. So. We've got this piece here, which is um, M14. And if we look at M14, we've actually got a couple of nasty little ejector pin marks here and here. And there's a couple very shallow ones here and here. Now, how are we gonna get them out? Well, what we can do is get a nice 22 blade on a Swan Morton four handle. It's a nice rounded blade and we can use that round edge to our advantage because it reduces the contact point on the plastic and we can use it as a chisel and gently cut away or we can use this, just that rounded edge 
to scrape and because it's such a small contact area it's not touching any of the other parts again I've been doing this for years so I'm quite confident with these blades and believe you me I have cut myself in the past but and that's removing that eject pin and what we can do when we've got it to a point we're happy with we can come in and gently give it a buff with a sanding sponge so you must be very very, very careful with these blades because they're very sharp if you do slip they will cut your skin very easily because they are originally designed as surgical blades I can't emphasize enough you need to be careful that takes those away no bother at all and come down the bottom and just get in here and scrape clean that away there we go last one we get the sponge just gently does it because you don't want to break any of these fine bits of plastic Give it a quick rub. Perfect. Excellent. All done. So, looking at this, put M14 glues in here, and then we'll attach onto part Q20 here. But what we want to do is just glue it on to the main body and not glue it onto the glass so we can remove the glass for masking. We want to use the glass as a bit of a template to hold the part in place. So drop a glue, pop the part in, and then hold it where it's supposed to be on the glass. And we'll put a drop more glue on there now the part's in, and let that bond. Okay, and position it where we want it. fine. Even get a drop of glue in there just to help bond it up. I want to set that to one side. All right so we are back with the last bits of the instrument panel. So um, parts goodness me M29 is one display uh, pilots, probably the pilot's display looking out. So you've got your multifunction display, display screens. I'll get my words out properly. Um, dials. There's a small T handle that goes in. So that's part M29. Um, and that is. Well, that doesn't make sense. Does it? Anyway, I can't remember what part that is, but anyway, that's part M29 goes into that. Then we've got um, part M15 and M6. They fit together quite nicely, I believe. There we go. Like so. So again, a little bit of clean up. And then on the edges we'll put some glue let the capillary action take it around the part give it a gentle nudge to grip same on the other side and then on the bottom now be careful you don't go over overly with the glue and get fingerprints on your instrument panels because it will be an absolute awful job to get cleaned up. So get it in place, gentle nudge. 
certainly requires a bit of gentle persuasion though if you're struggling to get grip I do have some self-closing tweezers some finer points on that so what you can do is get one of these in there like that that'll hold it in place till the glue sets up we'll get one on the other side so you get an equal pressure just be careful you don't grip anything that's going to destroy some of the raised detail because believe you me the raised detail is beautiful on this kit so we get that in there like that that'll give it a bit of positive pressure we can pop a little bit more glue in there which will help it fit together and we'll give it a couple of minutes we've got a three-way crimp going on there set that down and let them do the thing and that'll be fine and there's a couple of small bits to go on top and then we've got uh, part seven and eight and where do we see those so part seven goes down on the side so we'll look at that one first very very fragile parts very fragile parts indeed but they're coming apart okay take your time good pair of sprue cutters and be careful when you trim any parts you don't knock any of these fragile small thin parts off a little bit of a scrape clean Right, so part seven goes here. Like so. That's where part seven goes. There are a couple of eject pins in here, so we're gonna clean them up. Just because we don't want anyone to see them. There's no need for them. Not the file, see if that'll do it. Yeah, it's going to take them away nicely. And then the sponge to polish. Again, being really careful with these small parts here that we don't damage them. That's them gone. There is another one there. I think we'll take a knife to clean that one away because we don't want it to impede the fit. It's a bit raised. why I should be using the rounded blade so we can get that in where we want it there we go it's great clean right that's gonna fit really nicely now so get that part back in there and yep beautiful fit a little bit of glue nudge it's done yep so we're just getting these last two parts in here and then we will go for a test fit the whole cockpit so we've got part m30 that slots in here not very well i must admit but it will go anyway There we go. Put that in there. And then ne next to M30 glue, we have part uh, M28. So try not to ping it across the floor. There we go. 
proper glue just to make sure they're all in. Done. Excellent. Right, that's everything done for parts one and two. So let's have a test fit and see how it all goes together. So we've got that piece goes in there. We know it's a bit of a loose fit, but it's going to do anyway. I know the seats fit nicely. Very positive fit for them. For now, we take this combing off. So this instrument panels go in here, like so. And then the combing will go back on top to hold it in place. So you've got the weapons console going on the front here. So the fit's a bit. Yeah, there's located. Okay, there's a good fit there. And obviously this this part's gonna go underneath. It's always fun sometimes to get some of these things together. I don't want to waste too much of your time watching me trying to play around with this. So I'll try one more time. So that piece goes over the top like so. There. And there we have our completed cockpit. And it looks stunning. I have to say it really does look nice. Beautiful detail in there, crisp detail. A um, couple of bits of photo etch to go in. I'm hoping there's some photo etch harnesses I need to check and see. If not, we might have to make some because that will be the only downfall of this kit. But other than that, absolutely stunning, really good fit and nicely gone together. So in the next episode, we'll break the cockpit down and we'll do all the painting and then we can build it up and put it together for good. So thanks for watching. Until next time, happy modeling and we'll see you soon.